In about two weeks, six students and I are going to go up to Yellowknife Northwest Territories, Canada to research ice roads and the, uh, how the change in seasons affects the economy up in the Northwest Territories, which is basically in the Arctic Circle, just a little bit below. It's not the normal research project for a finance professor, um, especially one down here in Babson. Um, and I got into this project basically because my best friend from elementary school called me up. And he's an Arctic scientist and said, we'd like to submit for a National Science Foundation grant and we want to check to see how the economy gets affected when there is change in seasons in the Arctic. And you're the only economist we know. So if your best friend calls you when you're when it needs your help, then you may as well help them out. And I got involved with that. And since then, we've I've been up there. I've been up to Yellowknife about a month and a half ago in, in January. Um, and we've started on our research. We were successful in getting the grant from the National Science Foundation. And in it, we put in money to, uh, not just for me, but to actually pay for and take six or more students up to the Arctic Circle. The research that we're doing is evolving. Like many good research projects, it takes quite a while to find out what you can get. Our ultimate hope is to show how the change in seasons and the variability in the length of winter affects the economy up in the Northwest Territories in the Arctic area. One of the features, maybe the easiest one to think of that changes, is they build an ice road. Uh, this ice road has been demonstrated in Ice Road Truckers in season one of Ice Road Truckers on the History Channel. Um, and it is a road that lasts for about two months, and then it melts. Um, and during that time, a huge amount of economic activity goes up to mines um, up by Yellowknife. It actually turns out that the government of Canada also builds ice roads to help the native communities up in Wati and Gemeti, uh, for example, to have road access. For 10 months of the year, those people are landlocked and without, they can't even use a boat to get somewhere. Um, the only access is by plane. But for two months of the year, due to the road that the government of Northwest Territories creates, they're able to get in and out. And so we're going to compare and contrast the two different road systems, which have different reasons for being and different uh, human, human being adaptations to try to lengthen. What's really happened is it's the winters have been getting shorter, and it's more and more difficult to keep a road open. And if the trend continues, eventually those roads will disappear. And my suspicion is the National Science Foundation is curious, well, what happens when those roads disappear, and how does that affect the humans up there? It's been a busy couple of months. So after going up to Yellowknife in January, which is a rather cold time to go, and going out and going on the ice roads before they were open, um, which was interesting. In fact, we had to wear flotation suits on the government road because we might break through the ice and we had to be able to survive for a couple hours. Um, I did get trained about what to do if you fall through the ice. Now the ice roads are open and we're going to bring the students up. Between that time, we've had a class here at Babson on Arctic economics and science, and we've had uh, two different scientists fly in from Alaska to talk to them. That's part of the project. We've also had the, um, the former environment reporter for NPR come and speak uh, to the group, and we are having a variety of Babson faculty. Dick Mandel talking about meteorology. It's an excellent day. And most importantly, next week, we are going to have Ivor Morgan come and speak to our class. Ivor was part of the British Antarctic Survey. 1961 to 1964, and he is one, one of the few people remaining on Earth who was literally one of the first people on Earth to ever set foot in a particular area in the Antarctic, and there are sections of the Antarctic that are named after him, um, and so we're very excited to hear about his experiences down in the Antarctic and contrast them with what we're about to see. And we have two different entry points for the general community. One would be our blog that can be accessed through the Babson blog center website, but we also have www.arcticecon, A-R-C-T-I-C-E-C-O-N, which conveniently has, spells the word ice in the middle of it, www.arcticecon.com, and if you go to that, it goes to the, the website for the, for the project. The project, it also has a part for the class. You can see some of the class assignments, some of the research that we've done on the uh, area there, the economy, the native people. Um, the students have been tremendous. This has been a wonderful opportunity to get some students involved with primary research. In fact, we had different motivations for bringing the students. My colleagues in Alaska wanted to expose people in the lower 48 to an area they'd never see, but my real goal was to expose Babson students to original early stage research, which they don't get to see very often. Many things are packaged here. And they've kind of enjoyed it, though they've discovered that research is messy, especially when you start. And you kind of got to make do with what you have and see what you can find and see what you can figure out from that. 
to go to the next step. So I think it's been eye-opening. And we have five, actually five Babson students and one Olin student. It is a joint Babson-Olin project.